Well, my previous role was as chief executive of a charity called Gemini, uh, which was a charity that used IT and innovation to improve education around the world. Uh, it was probably best known for the online community Rafiki, which connected kids in some 120 odd countries around the world, and got them collaborating and learning together. So my role now is head of innovation at the world's largest private schools group, which is called GEMS. Well, teaching and learning is done very differently across the world. There's some fabulous stuff um, that I see happening in many schools um, with, with peer-led learning in particular. Some really, really exciting, interesting examples of how that's been brought to the fore. Something that we could very much learn from here. What you found in many schools was because pupils wouldn't move up a grade uh, until they passed their exams, that you had children of all different uh, ages and abilities in any particular group. And so the natural inclination was for uh, children to, to club together and some of the more able ones would help some of the less able ones and some of the older ones would help some of the younger ones and sometimes that was that, that was flipped. And we saw this, to be honest, on a, on a daily basis. So Rafiki is the world's largest online community of schools. What it did was it got kids collaborating together on educational projects so they would learn about fair trade rather than reading about it in a book or uh, watching a DVD. They'd actually meet children who were growing up on fair trade plantations and they could see for themselves the impact that fair trade had versus free trade. The most active school that we had was in Iraq. Uh, and this was partly because Iraq was very much in the news and other children wanted to, to, to find out what was going on. There. But we had this particular school leading various different projects, engaging with I mean, it must have been hundreds of other schools uh, around the world and uh, explaining to them about Iraqi history and explaining that uh, Iraq was more than just a war zone. Pupil-led learning percolated just about everything um, that we did. The average pupil on uh, Rafiki uh, had friends in six different countries who they would speak to on a weekly basis and 91% of the kids use Rafiki outside of school. So this was learning that went beyond just the classroom walls and it was really fabulous to see actually. We have an educational model here which personally I don't think works. Uh, I think it fails a significant number uh, of, our, of our children. I think it was, uh, it was a great system um, for an industrialist economy but we've, we've gone beyond that and it's simply not suitable um, for the society that we're in today. I do think that there's that there's, there's, there's hope. I think actually the real revolutions in education are not going to come from the developed world. They're not going to come from the UK. They're not going to come from the US simply because there are too many vested interests, too many entrenched positions uh, and, and the Daily Mail. So actually trying to get anything that's really going to stick, anything that's really going to grow, anything that's really going to have an impact, my feeling is that it's going to come from the developing world. And I don't think it's going to come from governments, and I'm not 100% convinced it's going to come from the charity sector. I think it's going to come from that hybrid between uh, charity and, uh, and the private sector, the piece that we call social enterprise. That, I see, is where the future is. I was involved in a, a project called Make Your Mark uh, with a tenor, with the wonderful Ollie Barrett. And uh, this was a huge punt, uh, a huge risk. Basically, we gave away 100 grand uh, sterling two kids and used £10 notes, um, which may have seemed rather foolish at the time. But what we kind of banked on was that these kids would be really entrepreneurial. And we were right. Um, we had children who uh, made £1,000 plus in a month with their £10 investment. The ones that were most successful, there was an origami business, there was a uh, some guys that cut a CD, which I still have in my car, it's great. And the really interesting piece from that was that we provided next to no guidance uh, to, to the parents, to, not to the parents, to the teachers. Um, there was very little in terms of resources. We just said, just go do it and just come back and tell us what you've got. Uh, and it was the pupils themselves that really took control. And it was amazing to see. It was really, really fabulous. Uh, so I, I put a challenge out to any stockbrokers that can do as well as those kids. Well, I think it's about making sure that the community itself understands that, that uh, the, the risk and failure are, are acceptable, and in particular, the, the sharing of, uh, 
the results? You know, what have we found out? What have we learned? You know, what mistakes do we make? Let's make sure that we don't repeat those again. I've read, because um, I'm, I'm also involved in various grant-making trusts, the, the amount of proposals that we get that say, everything's gone perfectly. Uh, everything's been completely smooth right away from, from start to finish. And you think, well, I, I really want to know what went wrong because that little nugget of information is so important.